So here are some of the common questions I get when I tell people that I'm in the field of cybersecurity. Bro, do you just code all day? Is cybersecurity all coding? Wow, you must be really good at coding. Sir, can you help me hack Facebook? Well, I guess if you came for an answer to just that question, the answer could be no. But if you're looking for a little bit more than that, stick around because we're, today we're going to be talking about how programming applies to um, three different subfields of cybersecurity. So today we're going to be talking about how programming applies to the career of a SOC analyst, a penetration tester, and how it actually applies to the, uh, the risk and compliance side of things. So all cheesy intros aside, let's talk about how programming applies to the field of cybersecurity. So at a high level, programming is just something that allows us as cybersecurity employees to really uh, get the most efficiency out of our work and to really just get these tasks done easily and repeatably. Um, so like I say in a lot of my videos, cybersecurity is a very broad field and it can be broken up into, it, this, is ver this is highly disputed into lots of various different fields. I personally, for this video at least, break it up into the three fields, the SOC analyst, the penetration tester, and then the risk and compliance side of things. And hopefully you're just going to be able to see that um, while the tasks in these different fields really vary, the daily operations vary, um, programming kind of used, is used for the same objective. So a lot of the time the tasks that we're actually automating are not security related on their own, but they actually do free us up to be able to spend more time and effort on the security related topics. So before we break down these three fields, if you could all just go give this video a like, it really helps with the content discovery. So the first field we're going to be talking about is the SOC analyst. And within the SOC analyst, I kind of break this down into a tier one and then a, a tier two or a tier three. And this is more of like a beginner and then an intermediate or an advanced SOC analyst. And the different program, these different uh, groups will have different programming demands. So let's start off with the beginner. The beginner SOC analysts, they're not really going to have to do as much programming exactly for their position. Um, so if you're not familiar with this position, the beginner SOC analyst really does a lot of uh, introductory work. They follow guides, they follow standard operating procedures, and they're, they're really not in a position to be doing uh, too much uh, automation and scripting. But if you, are, if you are looking to become a beginner SOC analyst and you do have these skills already, uh, you can definitely be a valuable member uh, to your team by helping out with some of the automating, some of the reporting, or even uh, just sitting in with some of the intermediate or advanced analysts and kind of seeing how they do their automations or their tool writing. And then moving forward to the intermediate or advanced SOC analyst, this is kind of when you have a little bit more uh, SOC experience, you kind of understand what's going on. And when you do understand what is going on, that's when you're able to actually create uh, some potential tools or some automations. So just giving you some practical examples, um, when I was working as a SOC analyst, um, I wrote a lot of scripts for, um, for IOC lookups, for example. Um, you can write scripts to automate out different parts of incident response processes. And then for, on the tool creation side of that, I actually created a tool that is an artifact collector for some incident response efforts. So in addition to automating um, and creating tools, you can actually automate the reporting process and then automate just the daily operations because this could really help your service line. So now moving on to the red team, uh, programming really is most important for the red teamers. You have to have a great foundation or maybe even a formal education um, that is based on computer science or you have to have a good understanding of these computer science fundamentals because um, a lot of the work as a red teamer is actually based on code. So you really need to be good at a language like Python, for example, but then you also need to call on this computer science foundation to be able to easily and quickly jump into a new language, even without uh, much learning time or startup time at all. And you need to be able to jump in, maybe make adjustments to a tool, uh, maybe make different adjustments to the automation, and, and also just be able to interpret code in another language because a lot of things happen on the fly on the red team and that's why you kind of have to have this foundation that you can call upon. So some of the practical use cases for programming on a red team are creating tools and then creating automations. And um, as a red team operator, I've done both of these actually. So uh, first we're gonna be talking about creating automations. So at, when you're working on a red team and in your assessments, you're gonna find um, as you do more assessments, different things become uh, more repetitive and also more prone to errors. So these are things you're going to want to automate out. I personally have done a lot of automations in Cobalt Strike. Um, so these are aggressor scripts written in sleep language. 
Um, and these, these really help me in my daily operations. And a lot of the times when, when I'm doing my, my red team operator role, it's actually in front of a client on a client site or on in a video conference. So actually writing these automations ahead of time, I go into this a lot more confident and I have to focus on the test case a lot less. I can do a lot better job explaining the test case, explaining what's going on. And when all I have to do is maybe input a few commands and I don't have to worry about having um, the full paths written out or anything like that because it's all just contained in my automation. And then if, if you really have a unique use case for your company or um, for, your, for yourself, for example, you can create a tool for this. And then I kind of hinted on this before, but you really need to have this to have this good foundation because you need to be able to quickly and efficiently read and interpret code for actual exploitation purposes. And also you need to be able to read and interpret code just to better understand your tools. Maybe your tool uh, that you're using doesn't have as much uh, documentation on it. So it's kind of sometimes easier just to dig into the tool and actually, actually see how it works. And then there are actually a lot of um, automations that are related to more of the infrastructure or the operations of the red team. So one example of this would actually just be um, writing an Ansible or a Lambda function or something of that sort to actually set up your command and control infrastructure. So this could be really any repetitive task that you find yourself doing that's actually taking away from time that you could be spending um, using your actual expertise, maybe uh, if you're consulting, actually making this billable time. So lastly, we're gonna be talking about the risk and compliance field. I personally have not worked in the risk and compliance field, but I have dealt with a lot of projects on this side and I have, I'm pretty familiar with the operations on how they work. So this is kind of like the sock in, in the fact that to get this actual job, you do not need to have uh, such a strong foundation of programming, but it does become very helpful when you do get this big picture view of things and you can actually begin to, to automate out tasks that you're doing a lot or tasks that are just wasting time for, for your team. One practical use case here would just be automating your reporting workflow. And then also you could automate out some of the, the data visualizations because ultimately if you have good data visualizations on this side of, the, of, this side of security, um, you can present this to management and they can actually enact change. So this was a quick video today and I really hope I got down to the points and maybe answered some of your lingering questions. And um, mainly I, I know I sound like a broken record at this point, but the main use of programming in cybersecurity is when you see an opportunity for something that can either, that's either repetitive, prone to error, or just that wastes time, this is where you in, incorporate your programming knowledge to actually eliminate this so you can spend more time focusing on things that are actually worth your time.